The petroleum tanker drivers have threatened to exit its umbrella body, the Nigeria Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, if its president, Williams Akwereha, and General Secretary Afolabi Olaole do not step down. Benga Olaole, an ex-official of the petroleum tanker drivers from Ibadan Depot, said in a statement on Sunday that their members will begin a nationwide protest to press home their demand. The statement directed members across the country to move with, le with leaves in front of their trucks to serve as a warning to Nupeng and police against interference and incessant harassment of their leaders. According to Olaole, Williams is not a member of Nupeng and as such lacks the competence to lead the union. He alleged that Williams was drafted into petrol station workers of Nupeng to give him eligibility to contest election as Nupeng president, which is a violation of Nupeng constitution. Olawale further alleged that Williams planted his surrogates to collect all revenue of the union, which were not used for the development of the union and tanker drivers. He called for a fresh election as members of the PTD have decided to stand with Loki Osusan and Nayabu Garga to be the new Nupeng president and general secretary, respectively. Members of the Judiciary Staff Union in Oshun State on Monday locked the entrance to the Oshun State High Court in Oshogwo in protest against the Chief Judge Adepele Ojo and the management of the activities of the judiciary in the state. The protesting workers led by Benga Oludire prevented movement into the premises and the protesting workers carried out placards with inscriptions accusing the chief judge of refusal to pay wardrobe allowances of workers in the last three years. Now, joining us from Oshun State via phone is Daily Trust reporter Hamid Doegbade to give us an update on the situation. Thank you so much for joining the news update. Yeah, good afternoon. All right. So, Hamid, what do we know so far about this, you know, protest by, by the judiciary workers uh, in Oshun State? What more can you tell us? Okay, the judiciary started here Jusun. They came out in the numbers today and blocked the gate into the uh, State uh, High Court, preventing lawyers and then um, the High Court. Their major um, position is that um, the State uh, Chief Judge, Justice Adepe Nojo, who has um, recently been um, removed by the State House of Assembly, which is generated issues. They claim that the woman um, has done a lot of things that was not in favor of the uh, staff. Particularly, they spoke about um, uh, not, you know, absor reabsorbing some of the staff that sometimes sacked. And despite that, those staff went to court. And um, the court eventually exonerated them and asked them to be, I mean, the uh, judiciary to absorb them back into their offices. So they are saying that the refusal of the CJ to um, allow those people to resume back to their work is one of the uh, things they are angry about. And um, they also said that uh, there are a lot of allowances that uh, they are supposed to be earning, that is the staff that the CJ refused to give them. They claim that all these allowances were in the budget of the uh, Judicial Service Commission or the High Court, and that the money you know, came through from the state government but didn't reach the staff, that they, they claim that the CJ uh, refused to give them all these benefits. They also claim that um, for a very long time, uh, the staff were not, you know, allowed to go on training, uh, which is their regular routine uh, activities in the past. That the uh, pocketed 
allegedly that the CJ pocketed the money that was lent for their training. So they came up with a lot of um, allegations against the CJ, claiming that uh, uh, the CJ was not uh, paid. You know, so that was the crucial of the uh, Juson member, the Judiciary Staff Union in Ocean State. And I spoke with their, their chairman, uh, Oluwa Gbeniga Olakonde, who uh, clearly uh, stated all the previous uh, against the CG. Okay. I think we do. Okay, uh, Hamid, is there, has there been any statement or comment from the management of the State High Court? No, not at all. The, the management of the State High Court um, has quiet all the while over the matter. And uh, precisely today, there was even no access into the uh, judiciary, I mean, the, the State High Court. The workers barricaded the entrance. They prevented anybody from going. So this is the registrar that not be able to go into the office. So the, the whole place was just uh, uh, deserted, except for the staff at the gate and the security operatives, the policemen, you know, who, who were staying there to ensure that the wouldn't go out of hand. All right. Well, thank you so much, Hamid Oegbadi, Daily Trust reporter from Ocean State, would uh, follow up with you on that story as it unfolds. Now, about one third of those who applied to join the police in the ongoing recruitment process have been rejected. The Police Service Commission said on Sunday that over 190,000 of the 500,000 applicants were dropped for failure to meet conditions such as age, inappropriate credentials and inadequate physical fitness. The nation's commercial capital, Lagos, Southeast states and oil-rich Bielsa, the smallest state, failed to show interest in the police job to the disappointment of the chairman of the PSC, former Inspector General of Police, Solomon Arase. Arase, according to a statement by the PSC spokesman, Ike Chukuani, urged the Southeast youths to engage their in indifference to change their indifference to police work, adding that embracing anti-government criminal gangs will not lead them anywhere. He urged them to be concerned about what will be the fate of the region in the future, warning that no development can thrive in terror-ravaged communities. Experts at the Nigerian Institute of Social and Economic Research, Ibadan, have charged all tiers of government to adopt an intensive approach towards tackling the menace of corruption. The call is coming in the wake of a research project that seeks to eliminate undesirable attributes while engendering national patriotism. The report. Despite establishing multiple agencies to fight graft, Corruption remains endemic, affecting governance and businesses. Experts say controlling corruption, however, requires systemic approach based on both rules and values with a comprehensive strategy that addresses both the public and the private sector. The corruption that we are witnessing is, most, is sitting more at the system level, that is in terms of the institution. It is for this reason that the Nigerian Institute of Social and Economic Research, in conjunction with the MacArthur Foundation, as embarked on this research project, we seems to find ways to eradicate corruption in all spheres of our national life. The problem is that we are all aware of the fact that corruption is very endemic in Nigeria. Now, what this study is trying to uh, project is that there are several ways by which you can deal with corruption. This seminar with the theme, Corrupt Behavior in Nigeria's Public Sector, Simplifying a complex phenomenon provides possible pathways through which corrupt behavior can be tracked and controlled in Nigeria. But you know, ours is just to conduct the research and to submit our findings to appropriate quarters. So we have policy implementers that are saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that things are done properly and that our research are uptake into actionable uh, actions. Other partners in the quest to read the country of graft gave their verdict on the best modalities to adopt in this regard. 
there is a kind of grand and petty corruption. But what we have been doing is that we have been dealing with petty corruption, but we are not ready to deal with that particular grand corruption. So there is still motivation for people to embark on grand corruption. Research only confirmed what we have on, always known in ICPC, and it's be what we have been working on to tackle corruption from every angle, not just the enforcement part of it, not just by arresting people, but also by increasing the values, the positive values that we have in this country. The general consensus there is that behavioral change should be encouraged to reduce corruption. The Court of Appeal in Abuja has nullified the election of Governor Caleb Mutfuang of Plateau State in the March 18 governorship election. A three-member panel in a unanimous decision on Sunday held that Mutfuang was not validly sponsored by the People's Democratic Party as provided by Section 285.2 of the Nigerian Constitution. The panel held that the appeal brought by Nentawe Goshue of the All Progressives Congress succeeds as the issue of qualification was both a pre- and post-election matter under Section 177C of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 and Section 80 and 82 of the Electoral Act 2022. The panel agreed with the appellant, Goshue, that the failure of the PDP to comply with the order of the Plateau State High Court, directing it to conduct valid ward, local governments and state congresses before nominating its candidates for the various elective posts. The panel also set aside the judgment of the Governorship Election Petition Tribunal for being highly inconsistent and breach of fair hearing by relying on expunged witnesses statements to refuse Goshue's appeal. The panel ordered INEC to withdraw the certificates of return issued to Mutfuang and issue a fresh one to Goshue. <laughs> Judgments just delivered by the court in respect of the governorship of Plateau State. The court was ruled in favor that it was entirely illegal. was not only qualified by virtue of the matter being a post election matter, they are brought the petition, but that his petition has merit. All the issues were resolved in his favor, and he has been declared as the lawfully elected governor of Plateau State. The Plateau State is the only state where a dedicated panel was uh, made available for all their appeals. In other jurisdictions and other states, panels are set up for individual appeals, but in respect of Plateau State, this panel was set up and they are trying all the appeals, they are hearing all the appeals from Plateau State, which of course uh, raises an issue of uh, whether this is in line with the procedure adopted by the court. Increase in the price of petroleum products, motors, premium motor spirit that is, also known as PMS, is in Makordi and environs is raising concerns among residents. With the Yuletide season around the corner, Makordi residents are worried over the development which could worsen if the government fails to address the challenge. Trust TV's Jimmy Azandi reports. Petrol is an essential energy needed to power vehicles for movements of goods and services in addition to running small businesses that are dependent on generators. However, following subsidy removal, price of the product has more than quadrupled, making it a source of concern for Nigerians. It's not easy. Like now, all the cars in the park, they are not even loading. People are not even coming because of the difficulty. So the masses are suffering. You can see the masses are trekking up and down. There are no vehicles. Look at the cricket vehicles that are packed. In, in the park, so it's not easy for us today. It's quite a difficult situation, it's biting hard. I'm feeling it. Prices in the market are high, so uh, it depends on your background and your income. 
So some would be able to afford, but I don't think it's a family that can afford. While awaiting effective government measures to caution the impact of the subsidy removal, residents say they are hoping the Tinubu administration will come up with an enduring solution to the hardship being faced by the citizens in the face of current troubling economic realities. The way I'm seeing the economy of Nigeria now is becoming deteriorating, very, very deteriorating. And so, to even eat on a daily basis is a very big task to parents. And so, uh, I want to advise the government to, to, to do something to this economy. If not, we are dying. I want government to do something about human being and human everything with the human. So that everybody Enjoy must be you. there. Must be there. Because it's not, it's not one person stop it be there. Everybody's supposed to be there. Based on human being. As the country grapples with huge unemployment and lack of job opportunities, more Nigerians now have fallen into the multidimensional poverty bracket making it imperative for policymakers to reverse the negative trajectory. Jimmy Azandi, Trust TV News, Makodi. You're watching the news update on Trust TV, coming up shortly. Jigawa residents find alternative means of livelihood through irrigation farming. Details and more after the break. Hello and welcome to Creative Lounge on Trust TV. My name is Ahmed Mohammed Bello and I'm going to be taking you through my journey as an artist. Thanks for staying with us. You're watching the news update on Trust TV. Here's a look at the main stories. Petroleum tanker drivers begin nationwide protests threatened to exit Nupeng. Protesting judiciary workers shot high court gate in Oshu. In other news, a gas explosion from a pipeline operated by a multinational oil company has rocked Omoku town in Ogba, Egbema, Ndoni, local government area of River State. The incident, which occurred on Saturday beside Grace Orphanage home of Egbada Road in Omoku main town, is believed to have been caused by equipment failure as the pipelines were set to be laid by the company since early 1960s. Confirming the incident, the Egbema Voice of Freedom said that the ruptured gas pipeline was yet to be clamped as residents around the area are now at risk of fire explosion. A leader of Egbema Voice of Freedom, Pastor Evaristus Nicholas, said that the pipelines are old and obsolete and should be replaced immediately. Youths in Baranda community, Dutz, a local government area of Jigawa State, have found alternative means of livelihood through irrigation farming. This came amidst lingering economic crisis bedeviling many homes across Nigeria. In this report, Trust TV's Adamu Imam takes a look at how dry season farming gives hope to the people of the area. The socio-economic challenge prompting rural urban migration is gradually becoming history as a result of irrigation farming engaged by many unemployed youths in Baranda community. District head of the community, Malam Isa Muhammad, told Trust TV that now his subjects can contribute to the gross domestic product of the country with agricultural boost in the area, which also guarantees economic sustainability. 
Irrigation farming is evolving by the day, especially with improved seeds for cash crops like carrot, which is also lucrative. It's capital in nature. At least now, I invested not less than 596,000 naira for carrot seed alone. So if you want to thrive in this, at most, 1 million naira should be kept aside to see the profit margin at the end. But we need government presence here. According to Isa Baranda and Hassan Mahmouda, dry season farming has paved way for many people to eradicate poverty that is so rampant in many communities, especially in less developed states. Noting that irrigation activities is capital intensive, which requires support to thrive. Now that many youth in Baranda have resolved not to go out looking for greener pasture, this is our major occupation. We get food here, build shelter, taking care of family members. So irrigation business has built our confidence in Baranda. We appeal to government to come and establish cash crops processing company here in Duse. Um, one of the farmers that you have caught across in the farm. You have seen me here. I can even come allow around 7 up to 8 a.m. being here, inspecting and monitoring how the activities of farming is taking place. Right now, I have about over 70 people in my farm doing harvesting for my rice. And these, time, these, these numbers of people will be taken at least four days in my farm. So as a youth, I can proud to be a farmer, most especially irrigation farms. The irrigation farmers urge the federal government to focus more on cash crops production through dry season farming to close the gap in effort towards food security in the country. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Jigawa. And away from Nigeria, the number of people killed in a powerful quake off the southern Philippines has risen to nine. The National Disaster Agency said Monday, warning that the toll could increase further. People fled into the streets or hid under tables when the 6.7 magnitude quake struck the Mindanao region on Friday, causing buildings to shake and part of a ceiling inside a shopping mall to collapse. At least 15 people were injured and more than 800 houses damaged or destroyed, the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council said in its latest update. The death toll steadily rose over the weekend as, as searchers found more bodies buried under the rubble or soil. Our search operations have largely ended, but the disaster agency said it was still receiving data from some of the dozens of villages affected by the earthquake. And in sports news, the 34th Dala Hard Court Tennis Championship captivated audiences in Kano with new records set in both men and women categories. Over 100 tennis players across the country participated in the tournament at the Kano Club. Trust TV's Abdulaziz Ibrahim in this report captures the excitement and fierce competition involving Nigeria's top tennis talents. The report. The excitement at the 36th Dala Hard Court Open Tennis Championship commenced right from the start. The Kano Club was filled with anticipation as the players delivered a breathtaking display of skill and determination. The first major upset happened in the first round when defending champion Uche Oparoje was eliminated by eventual semi-finalist John David. The final of the men's category had two of Nigeria's finest tennis maestros face off in a thrilling match. Second seed Henry Atseye from the FCT emerged as the champion, defeating seventh seed Kanis Abu. Kanis took the game to Henry, winning the first set by six games to two. Henry Asseye had to dig deep to win the next two sets, 6 2, 6 1, to emerge victorious. Yeah, I lost the first set at 6 2. You know, we we're playing with a lot of the wind, the sun, everything. But I was just telling myself, you're not the only one in this situation. He also is playing against the wind, he's playing against the sun. So I just tried to keep myself, to coordinate myself, and see how far I can work at to just give out my best and which I was doing, and it was working out for me. So I think that's what came me through.
The women's event was won by a wild card entrant Khadija Mohammed. The 14-year-old shocked Nigeria tennis scene by becoming the youngest ever winner of the Dala Hard Court Tournament. Well, I felt good to get a wild card because many people wanted the wild card, but I got it. So I didn't want to let the people that gave me the wild card down because there were other people they could have given the wild card, but they chose me. So I didn't want to let them down. That's why I came. And from the first day, I told the person that got me the wild card that I'm going to win. And then I did. This lady, a 14 year old, she will, she will inspire others to come into this tournament. No power. In the past, you have champions one year, second year, third year, same thing, same thing, same thing. So it's no longer happening. The 36th Dala Hard Court Open Tennis Championship is certainly a celebration of 36 years' journey of success in the tennis tournament. Abdelaziz Ibrahim, Trust TV News. And with that, we wrap up the news update at this moment. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for watching. Bye.